World of Warcraft's upcoming expansion, The War Within, introduces an all-new pillar of progression for open-world players. Delves are one to five player role agnostic adventures found throughout Kaz Algar. Players will typically be able to complete these bite sized combat, puzzle, and platforming mm -hmm. experiences in just 10 to 15 minutes, providing That's an additional good. way to level and an alternative path to end game rewards alongside Mythic Plus dungeons, raids, and PvP. Players can dive into Delves alone or in parties of any number up to five and any combination of classes and roles are viable, letting you approach each adventure as you see fit. Multiple I'm going to be really curious to see how this plays out, because, like, almost every instance of Blizzard trying to do something that's role agnostic has been bad. Like, an example is uh, Scenarios. Scenarios had so many problems. Then you had Torghast, so many problems. Island Expeditions, so many problems. I just don't know if they can do it, but it depends on how good the AI is. Healers could offer a safer way to travel, but prioritizing damage output might allow you to sprint through at record pace. Yeah, sure. This versatility allows players to progress with who they want, Ooh, it's a new how they want, and when they want. As you approach, you'll be prompted to choose a difficulty level mm -hmm. called a tier and can then walk right in. There is no loading screen. Lower tiers are available during leveling, with higher tiers added at max level and season one. If you're grouping with a friend or a couple of guildmates... I will tell you that Delves are actually the thing that I'm most excited about for The War Within. Like, unironically, I am the most excited about this. Because it's the only thing that's, like, new. Just party up to enter the same instance. If you're looking to meet new Delvers, the Group Finder tool can assist with finding or forming a party. In the same way, it helps form groups for quests, mythic dungeons, raids, and custom activities. Whether you group with friends or strangers, everyone in your party can play whatever class and specialization they want. Mm -hmm. So no one has to sit out or be overlooked because their desired role is already filled. I don't know if that's going to actually work. Like, I, I just, I feel like with how the WoW community is, like, I just, I don't know. The flexibility of Delves is I mean, it sounds really good, thanks though. to your companion NPC. Each season, you'll be accompanied by a new companion mm -hmm. who can be customized to complement your playstyle. The legendary Dwarven historian Bran Bronzebeard, renowned explorer and veteran of the Second War, will be the first to join you. By choosing Bran's specialization, he could be molded into a healer or damage dealer, allowing him to fill the role you or your group need. As you progress, Bran levels up too, gaining skills that expand his arsenal and enhance his effectiveness. If you want to focus on damage output yourself, Healer Bran is happy to throw a potion on the ground that heals allies. Okay. Or, with a damage-focused Bran, you could activate his Griffidens Battle Harness, which lets him bombard enemies with lightning hammers That's from cool. atop his loyal Griffin. Once your max like level of Bran too. is of a high enough rank, you'll begin earning Curios. Equip Bran by choosing a Combat Curio and a Utility Curio to give him trinket-like effects that empower your party. In addition, Brand can help you find lost supplies and delves that can help you in your runs. Man, I really hope this is good. I really do. I'm so nervous, man. Oh my, I'm so nervous. There will be 12 different delves yeah. to explore at launch, and you can expect to find some in each of the new zones. In the Isle of Dorne, you venture into the Earthcrawl Mines, a dig site that has been taken over by Nerubians. In Hallowfall, you must carefully explore the sinkhole, the very bottom of the zone, where all the water gathers and Cobus lurk and lure in their victims. In the Ringing Deep's Dread Pit, you'll spelunk into a forward base of operations that the Nerubians are using to lay assault on the machine speakers. And more adventures await in Ashkahet. What they need to fucking do is add in delves in like Oldaman and add them into the old world. And I think they're going to do that. I'm pretty sure they even said they're going to do that. Because like that would be fucking awesome. Yeah, tie delves into archaeology. Yeah, something like that. To discover yeah, Duskwood Crypts. Yeah. Upon the start that would of be so one, cool. A 13th delve will become unlockable, focusing on a single boss mm -hmm. encounter. Players Ooh. must now brave the enemy's lair and defeat the greatest threat yet, Zevzik. 
Delves are designed with replayability in mind and feature. I'm excited to see how hard that's really going to be. Because, like, if every class is fighting the same boss, are they going to have it to where, like, the Mage Tower... You know how, like, for example... Um, like, so, in the, the Prot Mage Tower, the tanking Mage Tower, where you fight the first, like, the, the guy with, like, the aura around him, there are these little eyes that you have to hit. And if you don't hit the eyes, they'll knock you off the map. And if you do it with a Druid, the eyes are immune to magic damage. But if you do it with, like, a Paladin, they're not. So, I wonder if they're going to have, like, dynamic balancing with this or not. And, like, also, like, the Paladin version is the same fight, but the boss has way more health because Paladin has way higher damage output. Or at least, like, that's how it was whenever it came out. Changing objectives. This means delves are dynamic, with each offering multiple experiences. That's a really nice-looking uh, mech variants thing. variants are unlocked at max level, similar to how world quests are unlocked, with different Great. variants available on a given day. Perhaps one day you're sent on a mission to rescue a group of Earthen from the Nerubians. But on another, you find yourself working with the Arathi to burn all the Nerubian nests in that same location. Thanks to their dynamic objectives, you could visit the same delve multiple times and have completely different adventures. Completing delves will reward you with a variety. Yeah, I think that what they're going to do is they're going to have it like so. So Wayfinder had this where you can go into like these dungeons and... They have, like, a lot of the same layouts, but, like, there are some rooms and, like, mob types that get changed every single time. And then, like, kind of PoE maps are like this, where the map layout is the same. Or, like, actually, PoE campaign is a better example, where, like, the layout is kind of the same, but it's a little bit different. So it's, like, a bit of procedural generation with, like, handcrafted things that fit inside of the generation. A valuable loot. Like Get to the yeah, treasure yeah, room yeah, at basically. the end of a delve, and you'll find chests that will provide you with guaranteed core mm -hmm. progression rewards, upgrade track currencies, delve currency, and more, including a unique reward. The Delver's dirigible mount can only be earned through delves. It's a cosmetically customizable flying machine that allows you to mix and match various modules to create your own dynamic flight masterpiece. This is really cool. I like this a lot. As you complete more of these adventures and journey into Azeroth's core, you'll earn new customization options, yeah. with more choices added each season. Core progression items earned scale all the way up into the endgame. They are awarded at item levels relative to the difficulty of the delve. See, this is what I think that WoW has been missing for a long time, is having like rewarding and meaningful like single-player progression. And it's kind of a weird thing, because I think that like Classic and Burning Crusade had really good single player meaningful progression with like professions and like even like with wrath you could join a lot more pug raids but now if you want to get really good gear you have to do high-end mythic plus or you have to raid and i feel like those two activities just aren't what a lot of players are looking for i think that really and again it's like a paradox where it's like an mmo but people are playing by themselves I think that people like the idea of occupying a shared world, but not having to be reliant on other people. And I think that's like, uh, it's like exacerbated by the fact that in retail WoW, you are punished because of other people's mistakes so heavily and so often. And so it just like makes you not want to play with other people. How Mythic Plus dungeons and raids work, with items capping out at power levels comparable to heroic raids or Mythic Plus 5 keys. I don't see the reason why you wouldn't make it at mythic level. Just make it a really hard version. I think this is another issue that people have. Like, nobody wants to invest all of their time into getting gear that's bad. Because what ends up happening is that the highest, like, item level, like, soft cap becomes the norm. Maybe, like, a month into a patch or two months into the patch. So, like, if you're a delve player, what's going to end up happening is that after you're, like, a month into the patch, or maybe even less than that, people aren't going to want to play with you anymore because your gear isn't going to be keeping up to everybody else. Like, that's just what happens. Why do you need good gear if you're not going to use it for high-end content? Because it's fun, and people like to have good gear and be, be more powerful. Why, what do you mean? Why do you think people want good gear? So they can kill the easier bosses faster. Duh. Like, like obviously. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah, of course. Heroic gear is good enough. No, it's not. I don't think it is. Like, I, I, that's why I think that, like, I don't really raid in Heroic. Like, I feel like it's a waste of time. 
because I can just do Mythic Plus and it's easier. It, it's faster and it gives better gear. It, like, I think that's why Classic WoW and like Classic, like Warcraft Classic in general, like BC, Wrath, all of those like versions were really popular. It's because you could get the really good gear in the game. Like Onslaught Girdle was really easy to get, but it was really, really good. So like, I think delves need to have a way that you can work towards really good gear. And if they don't have that, I just, I don't see anybody feeling like this is fulfilling. Because like, if, if they don't, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have like Raiders and Mythic Plus players that are progressing faster in their own content. And then they're just going to be able to completely roll over the delves. They'll be super easy because they'll have better gear. And anybody who's excited about this type of content is going to feel like they're wasting their time doing it because number one, they're already getting outpaced by people that aren't even doing the content because of the item level distribution. And then number two, they're going to feel like, why even do it in the first place if it won't even give me the best gear? Like, what's the point? Then why have raids then? Well, and, and that's the problem. And this is the issue that, like, WoW has, is that WoW has to, like, balance, like, three or four methods of endgame gameplay with each other. Like, Mythic Plus with raiding with delves. And then you also have PvP as well. Mythic Plus doesn't drop Mythic Track gear either, though. Mythic Plus... Um, has that been changed? Because I remember whenever I was playing, you could get Mythic level gear from Mythic Plus from the vault. Yeah, okay, so then you can. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Delves for the vault too? Yeah, only in the weekly? Yeah, but so that you can still get it then. Even the Great Vault itself is being updated to include mm -hmm. reward choices for completing Delves, offering players a chance yeah. to earn powerful items on a weekly basis. Delve currency can be used to buy collectibles and entry-level Warbound gear. You can also find the collectibles and warbound gear in chests directly, as well as transmogs, pets, toys, recipes, mm -hmm. and reagents. Keep an eye out for new hat cosmetics that can drop. That's cool. And embrace your inner kobold or fungus. Are you ready to like dive into Sombrero? Dells? That's good. Experience a more flexible, more customizable world of Warcraft in the War Within. Yeah. I mean, again, man, I'm really... I, I'm so... I'm just so apprehensive about this. If delves get the same shit as Mythic Plus item level, it will further invalidate raiding. Like, the thing is, though, is, like, I think that you're right. But if content is added into the game that players prefer doing, and it invalidates other content that people don't want to do as much, isn't that, like, a natural evolution of player preferences? Like, is it a good thing to like basically hard force raiding into the meta by making there have to be things in the game that you need to get through raiding whenever people at any other opportunity don't raid. Because like to me, that sounds like really illogical. Because if you're trying to play a game and make it fun for people, why do you have to keep forcing them into doing content that they're not doing for fun? Because I think that a lot of people, this has always been like my experience raiding, I think that people like raiding, but as soon as people get the gear and they clear the content like the first time, most people stop. That's what happened with my guild for years. Because it's like most people don't actually enjoy the content. They just want to get the gear or they want to get an achievement or something like that. And I think that Mythic Plus did take a huge amount of people away from raiding. And I, I, you can say that's like a good thing or a bad thing because like there's less people raiding. But in a way, I think it's it's also a good thing because it implies how out, it, it like basically shows how outdated raiding is. I think the entire like paradigm of raiding and like retail WoW has like it, it, it's it's like super outdated. How long have you enjoyed Islands or Torghast? Why do people get tired of it? Or why can't it be this time this time different? The reason why Islands and Torghast aren't the same as Delves, well, we don't know this yet, but the reason why people hated Torghast is because they had to do Torghast. And the, people, pe the reason why people hated Island Expeditions is because people had to do Island Expeditions. Because, like, you had to do those to maintain, uh, like, relevance with, like, the different types of progression systems. I don't think the Torghast at the end was really bad. But what I do think is bad is the fact that people had to do it. You're saying rating itself is completely outdated or the way that it functions in WoW specifically is? 
I think that the way that it functions in WoW is specifically outdated. I think the reason why it's outdated is because it's so prohibitively difficult and you need so many people for it that the only way you can do it is by setting aside time every single week in order to raid. And that's the way almost everybody Mythic raids, is they, they raid at a specific time on specific days. And making people set aside time like a job schedule in order to play a video game just isn't really the same type of vibe as it was, I'd say, 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Because people have so many other responsibilities, there's 15 other games out there, like it, the entire landscape of playing games has changed. And why would you want to like schedule time to do that? Now, how do you solve that problem? I think you solve it by increasing the raid size, decreasing the difficulty, and making the difficulty uniform by removing add-ons. That's what I think that the problem that, that's where I think the problems come in from. Because like one bad player can ruin a raid. That's awful because like that means you can't play with your friends. And so, like, at least make it to where you can carry a couple of dipshits, right? Definitely a good idea. And, like, in Classic WoW, I think Classic WoW was really popular for that reason. So, like, LFR? No, because, like, LFR isn't good because it just has a bunch of mechanics that don't do anything. I think that there should be mechanics in, in, in like, the raid that, that, like, have an impact on, like, what happens in the game and, like, on the raid's success. But in LFR, the mechanics are basically all cosmetic, and I think that they should just lower the amount of them and then make the ones that exist more meaningful. It's like, and I, I think that really it feels better that way. Like, because it's not like you're messing up, you know, 10 things, but you're doing 11 things right, so you're okay. Like in Molten Core, Baron Geddon only has the bomb mechanic, but everybody knows what that mechanic is. Whereas like with like new bosses, there's so many different things that are happening all at the same time. I think that if you asked a lot of heroic raiders, what does every boss do? They probably couldn't tell you. There's just too much happening.